you start trying to count in your head like when you're calling back home and you realize it's like 5 a.m. and you just woke your mom up. She's not very happy about that. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It's only you know, 2 in the afternoon for me. You know, I can, honest, I can honestly say like when we travel to like places like Southeast Asia where it's like a 12 or 14, sometimes 16 hour difference depending on what coast you live on. <clears throat> um, it does get a little difficult. I will tell you the older we get, the harder it does get. Um, you know, it used to be real easy to travel. Oh, I'm gonna fly from Atlanta to LA and I'll be in the studio all night. And I'm like, <laughs> but what we do try to do, like, I know for me, because when I get home, everybody thinks, everybody thinks we go home and we like play golf every day and take off and go to the beach. And sometimes we do that. But, you know, I have a seven-year-old that jumps on my head when I get home. So what I try to do is I try to kind of dictate my sleeping pattern the last two days of tour to kind of get on that cycle, whether it's East Coast or West Coast. So I'll stay up all night and then try to sleep during the day. So you try to have to adjust, but it takes, it does take a while. I mean, being over in Southeast Asia for like a month is, is really tough because you get acclimated to that schedule. You get back home and it's... You know, you're you're a whole day ahead. I try to buy the lottery numbers in the future so we can come back, but it doesn't it doesn't work like that. I don't know why. Yeah.